Welcome to CEO Chronicles, the Natural Hair Edition, where we will look into the businesses and lives of natural hairstylists, natural hair salons, and natural beauty. Hi, I'm your host, Valeria Sarah. As we become more aware of ourselves, we begin to realize that our body really is our temple. And one of the ways that we can take care of our temple is by exercising and eating healthy. So today I have the opportunity of speaking with April Sims and Purcell Keeling, owners and operators of Simply Wholesome Health Food Store and Restaurant. Thank you guys so much for having me. I'm, I'm very appreciative that you guys are taking the time to interview with me today. I see that you both have locks. How long have you been growing them? I've been growing my locks for about 18 years. And uh, about 11 now. About 10, 11 years now. I'm yes. sorry. About 11 years now. 11 years. And how, what do you use to maintain your locks? Any type of particular products you use? Oh my goodness. We use all the products literally that we sell in the store. Right now I'm using the Ben um, Shea Butter Shampoo. I'm using the Mahogany Roots Vegan Twist Butter. I also use the Jane Carter Solution Revitalizing Leave-In Conditioner. And we always use Urban Life Head Sprung for moisturizing the hair and Happy Hair's Hair Milk as well. And do you use some of the same products that she does? Actually, uh, I use all the products because she does my hair, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she does, she yeah. does your hair. <laughs> yeah, she does. So actually, I use all the products you just mentioned. And in addition, he's also using Kazi Oil, which is a delicious oil serum that one of our customers, um, who's a licensed cosmetologist, created. For sale was with her, was her test guinea pig on it. And we are proud to have that product on our shelf now, as well as the Shea Moisture Line, the uh, Jamaican Black Castor Oil is what we're using as well right now. you guys decide to get locks and what does locks having locks mean to you wow that's an interesting question I have done every single thing with my hair and locks for me was a natural transition I started wearing my hair natural when I was 12 years old um, I got my hair braided by the ancestral braider Nawili Oyo um, and I was hooked ever since I've been locked well, I had been locked for about 18 years, but I decided to go natural when my son was born over 26 years ago. Wow. Um, to be honest with you, um, I started to lock, uh, April actually suggested that to me. Uh, because at that time I was going through a lot of things, uh, personal things, and uh, she said, uh, you ever thought about locking because uh, that'd be a nice experience for you the experience going through that transition of locking. So, you know, uh, I've always, over the years, tried different hairstyles myself. And I, I did like the locks, because a lot of brothers would come in Simply Wholesome, and they had locks, and I saw some that I really, you know, resonated with. So I tried it, and uh, it's been a beautiful journey. And she was correct uh, as far as making a balance. It balanced me out. Also gave me a lot of insight on myself and a lot of insight on people in general, just how they perceive individuals with locks, right. you know? And I, you know, I found that, at least in my experience, that either they love it or they don't. Right. It's like no in between, you right. know what I mean? So it's, 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 it's very, very interesting. But I enjoy it, I like it. Awesome. Yeah, and I just wanted to add to what Purcell was saying. Definitely the balance, mm -hmm because the lock is a process and it's a journey and it's given me um, patience. Patience with myself, patience with others, as well as release of judgment. Re release of judgment first with myself and then also release of judgment with others. The locks for me also definitely is a political statement. I'm not gonna beat around the bush about that. When you see me, you see me. I'm not hiding. My hair is natural other than the dye, because I am not ready to be gray yet. <laughs> I feel you on that one. <laughs> I'm not having that, not right now. But I 
I'm very proud of who I am. I'm proud of my ancestors, and I want that to come across every day, every time you see me. And I would, I would uh, piggyback off that also. Um, I've always done my own thing, and I uh, did it on a subconscious basis. Mm -hmm. uh, but once I started to lock, it kind of like put everything together, and uh, it gives, when you see a person with locks, you, at least for me, it represents a person that is a free thinker, and uh, they are typically doing their own thing. You know what I mean? Because uh, it's typically it's not something that society really embraces, mm -hmm. but uh, most most people have a tendency to gravitate towards pleasing somebody else. Uh, but you know, when you're locked, you know, like I said, it shows individualism and it shows uh, strength and power. That hey, I'm going to be whoever I am on my own. So, you know, so yeah. You both have and own a health food store and a restaurant, so obviously having uh, good health is very important to you. What would you say is your personal philosophy on um, your personal health? Wow, well, Simply Wholesome's motto is Simply Wholesome keeps you feeling good and looking good. And Purcell, the founder of Simply Wholesome, he coined that phrase many, many years ago, and I think that we both do our best to embody that. Um, and Purcell can expound upon the fact that he's a lifelong vegetarian and lifelong distance runner. And I think that he has set the example for all of us, myself included, to make sure that we maintain our healthy bodies because your health is your wealth. And that's our greatest, most valuable asset we could all ever hope to possess. Uh, my personal philosophy is um um, exercising, you know, well, first of all, I would say that, you know, you can't put a limit uh, or a price on your health. You know, there's a lot of individuals right now that's that's laying up in a hospital that multimillionaires that would give it all up to have your health so they can be here a little bit longer. Um, so, you know, you can't, like I said, you can't put a price on that. Um, I think that if you eat right, you exercise, get enough rest, um, and keep that balance of stress off of you as much as you can, and you have a really, really good chance of um, living a full life. You know, um, we're all here on borrowed time. Um, we have no control of that, but we do have control of the quality of life while, while we're here. I'm a non-athletic person, most non-athletic person I know, but I do walk an hour, five out of se every seven days. No matter what, no matter how late I've been up at night, no matter how long my day has been the day before, I get up and walk. I was up this morning at 6.30 down at the park walking. you for you know giving me some of those tips on exercising and eating healthy so I'm gonna take that to heart but I want to talk a little bit about your business I see that you have a thriving business behind us so can we go inside and talk a little bit more about you know how you've had a successful business in the long run sure. Absolutely. So I wanted to talk a little bit about your business, Simply Wholesome Health Food Store and Restaurant. Uh, can you tell me the humble beginnings about Simply Wholesome? Uh, well, Simply Wholesome actually, um, I actually started in business in 1981. Um, I owned a nutrition center inside of a Jack Lane, house, uh, Jack Lane Health Spa in Inglewood on Century and Inglewood Avenue. And uh, one day, uh, I was talking to a friend, I lived here in the community, and I was telling him, I said, you know what, somebody needs to open up a health-orientated place in the community because I got tired of driving outside the community to find something halfway decent to eat. And my, and my friend looked at me and he said, uh, you know what your problem is, Purcell? And this is a guy that I went to high school with and college with. And uh, he said, your problem is you think too small. He said, you're already doing it at Jacqueline, but you make just enough money to get by. And 
I had to think about that later on that night, and he was right. I was taking just enough money for my apartment, for my car, and, and other little things. But I wasn't really thinking about stretching out, really. And so I thought about it, and uh, uh, Simply Hope was born. I happened to be running one morning with a friend up over hill, and we cut across the parking lot on our way to Angela's Vista, and the building across the street had a sign on it for rent. Mm -hmm. And I got to uh, Angela's Vista where the 7-Eleven is at, and something hit me internally and said, turn back around. And I turned back around and memorized the number, called, and Simply Wholesome was born. What are some of the challenges, challenges of growing a business? Uh, well, there's quite a few, <laughs> to be honest with you. <laughs> um, I would say one of the main challenges is just finding individuals that um, that you can work with, you know, that want to work. I mean, everybody say they want to work, but some people really don't want to work. Um, that is probably one of the hardest challenges. and. Um, you know, I was very fortunate to um, hook up with April. Like she mentioned earlier, her father was the contracting company that when we moved across the street here to our present location, he rehabbed this place for me. And uh, I had the opportunity to meet April. Our families knew each other from years back, but uh, I only have a few years more on April. And, <laughs> and uh, I knew her indirectly. But by working with her dad and working with April, we got a lot closer. And um, as she mentioned, uh, her father unfortunately had passed away. And, um, and uh, she saw that during that transition period, for me, it was a new business. Even though I was in business across the street for eight years or so, moving over here was just a totally different animal. You know, it was a lot bigger. You had to depend on a lot more people where when I was across the street, I could pretty much, one or two people could pretty much handle it, you know. But over here, you had the kitchen, you had the store, you know, the restaurant and all that kind of stuff. So it was too much for one person. So April at that time was uh, one of our uh, customers and she used to just jump up on her own and, and fill in wherever it was needed, you know. One day I said, you know what? You need to get paid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, it never came up. She never asked for a dime. She just, you know, volunteered wherever need be. And and um, then the true Simply Wholesome as far as a unit was born. You not only run a successful health food store, but you run a successful restaurant as well. And um, how did you go about figuring out which products or, or basically which foods to sell and to serve in your restaurant? Well, it's the combination of trial and error as well as customer suggestion. But really the bottom line is what we like to eat. Honestly, I'm a very, very finicky and very picky eater. And the nice thing is, and I don't like preparing food, but I like giving directions on what I want. <laughs> so I get the opportunity, and I'm so blessed and grateful every single day to direct what I'd like to eat. It turns out that lots of customers also like some of the selections that Purcell and I like to eat. Our staff comes up with menu items. Our children come up with menu items. There's several items on the menu that were born by Purcell, by his, his daughters, um, by our staff. And um, we are blessed to have some excellent chefs and they throw down in our kitchen and our customer base resoundingly, resoundingly says, yes, give us more. What is, what's next for Simply Wholesome? Um, what, what do you see for yourselves? What vision do you have in the future for yourselves? Well, like our Tree of Life, which you've probably seen, is our logo. Uh, and they're my earrings. Yeah, right. Right, nice. You know, uh, 
where the, the uh, it's like an oak tree and you're you know reaching for the stars and then you're grabbing all the fruit that life has to offer. Uh, we're doing the same thing, you know, it's just really open right now. Uh, we're just kind of taking it day by day and just doing what's coming natural and um, we'll see, you know. Sky's the limit. Sky's the limit, you know what I mean? The sky is the limit. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And I just want to say on behalf of Purcell and myself, we really appreciate you coming here. We appreciate reconnecting with your family, with your son, your husband. And we've checked out your series online. We are encouraged by the fact that you've taken upon yourself to highlight some good things that are going on in the greater Los Angeles community because this helps give exposure to many people just like Simply Wholesome. We're very proud that we do business on a regular basis with 85, yes, 85 vendors that look like you and I, black and brown, small business owners across this country and across the, continent, across the waters back to the continent of Mother Africa. So even though we're a small place, we are mighty in terms of our footprint and as it affects and helps, enhances our communities and ourselves. For us, by us. For us, by us. I love that. Well, I thank both of you guys for taking the time to speak with me and giving me the opportunity to learn more about you personally and learn more about your business. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And thank you for watching CEO Chronicles. And as always, we encourage you to become your own CEO. Thank you for watching CEO Chronicles, where we inform, inspire, and educate, and we encourage you to become your own CEO.